Well, good morning. I almost said worship team. Good morning, West Point Church. Come, let us stand and worship the Lord together. Those who are joining us online, welcome. Let us worship our Heavenly Father. There's a place I know filled with joy and great peace where your soul finds rest and your spirit thrives. It's a place we know where the presence of God, where work and where strive meets and match with the cross. Oh, the cross of Christ he is my doorway to heaven. Oh, the cross of Christ, my stairway home, where the Father sits, He calls to you and me. It's the cross, it's the cross of my Jesus Christ. There's a place I know filled with joy and great peace where your soul finds rest and your spirit thrives it's a place we know where the presence of god where work and where strive meets their match with the cross to oh, the cross of christ he is my doorway to heaven oh the cross of christ my stairway home where the father sits he calls to you and me it's the cross it's the cross of my jesus christ Paul.
church, the victorious church, the glorious church of Jesus Christ. He's our captain. He's our army leader. He's the captain of the hosts of heaven. This morning, all of the angels is under his command. We stand before you, God, and we say, raise up an army. Raise up an army in the church, Lord. Raise up an army on the earth that will worship you in spirit and in truth this morning. Lord, that every chain of of affliction, every chain of addiction, every chain of sin will be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. I hear the chains falling. Come on, can you hear the chains falling this morning in the spirit? I hear the chains falling. Come on, let the chains fall. Chains, 
morning that you break every yoke every burden that you carry those burdens lord the yoke of slavery has been broken to sin and lord you brought us righteousness through your blood you brought us righteousness through your act upon the cross thank you jesus that there's no more condemnation for those who are in christ jesus this morning that they are free this morning thank you lord that you break that yoke this morning thank you lord that you break every sickness this morning thank you lord that you break every stronghold this morning thank you lord that you break every chain this morning in the mighty name of jesus and all of god's people say amen amen come on let's praise the lord this morning in this house let's raise our voices to the king let's worship him come on every chain broken in the mighty name of jesus we worship you lord we worship you, Lord. Come on, we worship you, Lord. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Every chain broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Every resistance, every chain in your family, every resistance of the enemy, broken in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's praise his name again this morning. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your chain-breaking anointing this morning in this house. There is no one like Jesus. There will never be anyone like him. He's the only one that could deal with sin. He's the only one that can break the chains of affliction this morning. He's the only one that can break the curse of poverty. He's the only one that can come this morning by his spirit and do the work that only he can do. He's the only one that can bring salvation this morning and deliverance and breakthrough. He's the only one, the name, the only name that man can be saved by is the name of Jesus. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the ancient of days. He is the darling of heaven. His name is Jesus. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. There is no one like my Jesus. And we will worship him in this house because I can see this morning in the spirit that chains are broken over families and over finance and over bodies and over sickness and over lack and over disappointment and over shame and over depression and over heartache this morning. Every chain must come down this morning because we worship the name of Jesus. We worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Prince of Peace this morning. His name is, won't you say with me this morning, His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. We declare it this morning, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord.
is Lord. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't it good to worship Jesus? Because when you lift up His name, every other name, every other thing, every other affliction, every other thing that comes against you must bow to that name, the name of Jesus. When we worship, we worship Him in spirit and in truth. There's something happening in the spirit this morning that we cannot see with the naked eye, but we can discern with our spirit, spiritual eye this morning, and we can know that God is breaking every chain this morning of the enemy that he's trying to establish upon the people of God. There's a breakthrough coming upon the church in these days. There's a move of God that's upon the church right now. If only we'll take hold of what the Spirit is doing by faith and not by sight, because many people are looking with sight. They're looking at the news. They're looking at the signs. But God says, it is time that you look at me because I will direct you. I will direct your footsteps. I will give you the faith that you need in these days because the days are evil, but my spirit is active upon the earth because I sent my spirit. In the last days, my sons and my daughters will prophesy and they will speak the move, the move of God into a place. They will speak over this season of God in the church. We will prophesy again that the church will rise up for the coming of the King is near and we need to prophesy of His goodness, of His mercy, of His grace and we need to praise the name of Jesus above every other name. We need to lift up our faith above our fears. We need to stand upon the Word of God this morning because we will be unshakable in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's praise Him again this morning, church. Be excited to be here this morning to worship Him. Won't you turn to someone this morning, greet them in the precious name of Jesus. Give him a chicken wing, a fist bump. If it's your wife, you can give her a kiss this morning. There is power in the name of Jesus. And who else to know better than the church of Jesus Christ that there is power in the name of Jesus? How many of you know there's power in the name of Jesus? How many of you know that there is power in the name of Jesus? Come on, tell the person next to you there is power in the name of Jesus. How many of you know we need to believe this and not only declare this? It sounds good to say there is power in something, but unless we believe it, it cannot be actuated in our life. We cannot see the, the fruit of it unless we believe in what Christ has accomplished. Unless we believe that Christ is the Son of the living God and that He's able to hear your prayer this morning, unless we pray with faith, amen, nothing will happen. The Bible says a man must have faith when he prays, amen, unless he doesn't want to receive anything from God, but you will receive from God when you have faith this morning. Our faith is not based on how loud we can worship. Our faith is based on how loud we can lift His name. And how, how much we can lift the name of Jesus up in our lives, not only on a Sunday when we worship like this, but what a great occasion to come together to celebrate. Aren't you happy to be together this morning? Aren't you happy to see the beautiful faces of those around you this morning? Eh? Not so excited about that. Okay. Uh, come on. I get excited to get together with God's people. The Bible says this is the gathering of the saints. This is the house of power. This is where things begin to happen. I'm excited to come to church because I'm excited because I don't always know what God's going to do. I never know what God's going to do, actually. I just do what I'm called to do, and God will do the rest. Amen. God, if you need a miracle in your family this morning, that's what God can do. Amen. If you need breakthrough in your life this morning, then surrender all to God, and you will see how He operates in you and through you. Amen. But welcome to the Open Door West Point for those that are online. So good to be here. We were in Cape Town for a week. Uh, we refreshed and refueled and refired, amen, to do the things of God in the house, and we're going to see some great things come through. So this morning, I'm excited to take up the tithe and the offering, amen. Why am I excited? Because this morning, we're talking about spiritual warfare. Our theme is still this month, spiritual warfare, and this morning, I'm going to be talking later on worship, and when we come to worship, worship is not only, uh, not only expressed through our songs, but worship is expressed through our lifestyle, 
When people look at your life, do they see the worship? Do they see the God that you worship? Because people can quickly see what you worship by what you do. Amen. People can see what you worship by what you do or who you worship by what you do. And so when you give to God of your tithe and your offering this morning, it is a sign that you are worshiping God and Him alone. And that you are obedient to His commands because it's a command for us to bring the tithe into the storehouse. How many of you know this? God wants us to test Him in this area. And when we worship God in the area of finance, when we submit everything to God, He will look after you. You know the book in Matthew, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, speaks about provision. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You see, it starts with seeking God first and His righteousness. In other words, a relationship through His Son, Jesus Christ, with the Father. And when that is in place, when your worship is in the right place with God, then everything else will be added unto that. Everything that you need. This morning, you may be asking God for needs. How many of you ask God for needs every, every time you go into the prayer closet? Yes, we know we don't start there, but we do have a list somewhere that we need to pull out and say, God, wouldn't it be nice if you could do this? Lord, wouldn't, you, wouldn't it be great if you could get my family members saved or my husband or my wife? Or Lord, wouldn't it be nice if, they, if you could just do something to my neighbor's dog? Even if you kill him, it's fine, Lord. Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> you know, don't you, don't you ask of the Lord. We need to ask of God. Amen. And so it's part of our worship, and, and part of our worship is to, is to give everything to God this morning, our devotion. I believe this morning it will show where your heart is, amen, there your treasure will also be. So this morning we need to give to the Lord of our finances because it's a part of our worship to the Lord, amen. It's part of our lifestyle as Christians. We give to God. That's what we do as Christians. How many of you know that we serve a generous God? Do you believe that? Do you believe we serve a good God? Uh, let's be good this morning and let's serve the Lord with our finances as well. Let's bless the Lord as they go around with the bags and the buckets. The buckets are still for our food project. And uh, we continue with that and we continue to see people being blessed through it. This very week we were able to bless two families with food parcels at their house. And we're going to continue to bless the families that we have been given to. Continue to do this. And Jess has been doing a great job following up with everyone on the food project and the gardens of faithfulness coming soon. And well done, Jess. Come on, let's give Jess a hand. Come on, she's been working hard. Don't forget, if you want to support our widows and the ladies and so forth, the Pastor Galia has got the shop in the front. There's some real great things to buy there. I think ladies go and shop there on Sundays. They're like excited. I know the ladies in the week that come to the ladies group. Am I right, uh, Sandy? <laughs> some ladies come very early so they can beat the rest to the new products. And uh, that's, for, that's, not for, that's not for us to eat from that money, let's put it that way, but that is for us to bless the widows and bless the ladies and do what we do in the church, amen. And so we continue to do that. I know some people are wondering what are we doing with the money, <laughs> but we are doing it for the Lord, amen. Oh, these baskets are going nice and slow. I see the people are struggling to get their notes through the, through the, through the hole in the bag, amen, that's a good sign. Silent offerings, as we call them in the church. Um, I heard a very funny story. We were visiting my family in Cape Town, and I heard a very funny story of a man that w w didn't want people to hear that his coins are falling in the bottom of the thing, so he stuck his hand into the bag, and it got stuck in, in, the, in the offering bag. <laughs> so that's quite a predicament. I also heard of someone else that put, um, put like a 200 rand in and took a 100 rand change from the tithe and the offering, so uh, that's why we make the sleeve quite small, so it can only go one way, you can't come and, if you forget to draw the hundreds, um, just put the whole amount in, don't worry about the rest, God will look after that, amen. We hear these funny stories during our tithe and offering, but let us pray over the tithe and the offering as the ladies take it back. Father, we thank you this morning for your blessing, we thank you Lord this morning that we are able to give to you, we thank you Lord this morning that you're a good God. We thank you, Father, that as we stand before you, that we serve a generous God, a Father that has blessed us with so many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the breath in our lungs. Thank you, Lord, for our family. Thank you, Lord, for our health. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to work for the finance that we bring in for those that are struggling in the area of jobs. Father, I pray for provision. I pray, Lord, that you would show yourself as Jehovah Jireh, our provider, even as you did with Abram and the, the ram that was in the thicket in the bush. I pray, Lord, that you will provide a way out for those that are praying this morning. Lord, I need a desperate miracle in my finances. And Lord, I pray 
that we would have that breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to move straight on. There is no news this morning. They say no news is good news. And so I'm just going to, I forgot my tablet at the bottom here. You can take it out for me. Unless you, uh, unless I just uh, preach by memory, it might be very difficult, but um, we might get something totally different coming out. We're talking about spiritual warfare and worship. How many of you love the topic of worship? Anybody? Looks like we are frozen with the weather. So you can put up that first slide for me. Worship. Worship, worship's blueprint. There we go. Worship, the blueprint for warfare. Now, we've been speaking about different things on Mother's Day. We spoke about freedom, being set free. We spoke about family, bloodline curses, all of these things, people that get confused about this stuff. Um, I, I love what the scripture says, that there is a blessing for a thousand generations that those that love the Lord. I want to be rather of those that love the Lord than those that are disobedient to the Lord. Let me just tell you, family curses and those type of things continue because of sin. There's a door open somewhere, amen, for the enemy to continue this. I've used the example of my own family, my grandfather, married four times, my dad twice, and me once. The proof is here, 22 years later, I'm still married to the same woman. Amen, isn't that good? You see, God, God will restore if we make a choice to worship Him, if we make a choice. You see, the blood of Christ is strong enough to break any curse. You need to believe this. Many times we believe in rituals and formats and formulas and things like that. And we often do these things so we can feel better about what we're doing and less about what Christ has done. Amen. And I believe that God is calling the church back to a worship of Christ and God alone. And God is the only God that needs to be worshipped. And He's a jealous God. Yes, He is. And when the Bible says He's a jealous God, He's like He doesn't want to contend with other things. And we're going to talk about that this morning in worship. Worship is not only singing on a Sunday. It's a small portion of worship. We have people, I, I heard a statement once which is horrific, but it's true. It says Christians don't lie so much by what they say, but by what they sing. I mean, we can say this morning, God, I surrender all. But when you go home, you don't surrender all. So it's not true what you're singing. It's more true what you're doing. And so I believe we may, when we come in worship, that's why the Bible says we must worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. Worship in spirit and in truth. Be full of the Spirit of God. Be led by the Spirit of God. Worship in the truth of who Christ is and what the Word teaches. Amen. Worship Him on the truth. Amen. And so this morning we need to be those worshipers that God desires. And I'm going to start off this morning to go back to the garden. Have you noticed that I love going back to the garden? In many of my sermons, Genesis is a... A, a treasure, treasure chest of uh, knowledge and insight and revelation. And when I go back to the garden, I read in Genesis 1, verse 27 to 28. When we go back to worship, we need to go back to the garden. How many of you know this? There's a, there's a song that speaks about back to the garden or back in the garden or gardens, turning graves into gardens. Is that right? And uh, Genesis 1, verse 27 to 28 says, So God created mankind in His own image. In the image of God, He created them, male and female, He created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Now worship back in the garden. Do you see here, do you see here that God, and we can go to the next, next slide, there's a couple of things that we see here. The first thing is, God did not command man to worship in song, dance, or good works. God didn't say to Adam and Eve, you must now begin to worship me in song. You must now begin to sing beautiful songs to me in the garden. You must now begin to do good works in the garden. Be good to the animals. Be good to the trees. Be good to these things. No, He didn't say any of these things like we do today. Our worship is sometimes wrapped up in a half an hour on a Sunday. Do you see this? God didn't say to them to do these things. He didn't have to say these things. And Adam and Eve worshipped by ruling and being fruitful in obedience to what God said. God said, rule over these things, be obedient, go out and subdue the earth. So they were obedient to God's commands. And that was the form of worship that they gave to God was obedience to His word. Amen? I think we need more Christians that are obedient to the word 
and not just singing on a Sunday and lifting hands and looking beautiful in church, but actually walking and living out the Word of God. And this was shown right in the garden. They weren't, they, God wasn't impressed when He said, Oh, look at Adam. He's doing a song this morning. He's writing a, a poem in my name. He's, he's dancing. Look at Eve. She's dancing like a ballerina. Beautiful. Okay, imagine Eve. Don't imagine me. Okay. If I had a tutu on this morning, maybe it would have worked better. Okay. But the God wasn't like, and, and, and often we think God is impressed because we have a good voice. Or a bad voice. <laughs> the people around us aren't impressed with a bad voice, but I thank God that He looks at our hearts. And He looks at what we give from the heart. He doesn't listen to your voice. He, he's not impressed with the greatest worship leader on the earth. And you might have a dispute about who you think is the best worship leader that can lead God's church in worship. God is not even impressed with that person. Do you know that that person could be fully away from God and still lead worship from the platform? We've seen it over and over again in church. We are impressed with the wrong things. We should be impressed in worship with obedience. Obedience starts when you leave the church building. Obedience starts when you enter the church building and when you leave the church building. Obedience started when you gave of your tithe and offering this morning. Obedience is in everything that God commands us. And Adam and Eve lived out the obedience of what God gave them to do. They worship by not eating of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. But then we know they did. <laughs> but that's how they could worship God, to do what God said not to do and to do what God said they must do. And so obedience is very important. They were in perfect relationship with the Father. Do you know this? Perfect relationship with the Father. Relationship with God is key in your worship to God. You cannot come and perform. Performance has got nothing to do with worship. Performance has got to do with entertainment. How many of you know that? We can be entertained in church or we can worship in church. And when the true people of God begin to worship, something happens in the spirit. Something begins to happen in your spirit. Something begins to happen in your life because you surrender all to God. Because worship lifts God up and it says, God, you are bigger than I am, stronger than I am, more worthy of the worship and praise than I am because I am not worthy. Amen. And when you lift up the name of Jesus, that's often why I put my hands out. I surrender all. There's nothing more I can do to worship you, God, but to give my all to you. And when you worship this morning, your words and your deeds must come together. Your actions must line up with what you say this morning. If you say in church you're going to do that for God, you're going to worship God. And sometimes people even make promises to God. And the Bible says don't make a promise to God because you're likely to break it. Amen? Because you are flesh. Don't make a promise. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. What is the, what is the thing that breaks that communion with God? What is the thing that broke down the communication between a man and God? What was the thing that started happening right there in the garden already? A small word called sin. And I, I love what Paul says, and I, I feel like this sometimes, and I'm sure you feel like this sometimes. We still have the flesh. Now, let me put it this way. We don't float around on clouds. We still have the battle between the flesh and the spirit every day. Come on, some of you need to say amen to this. We still have that battle. We have to say no to sin and yes to God. We still have that battle where temptation will be set up. You know, no man is immune to temptation. No woman is immune to temptation. No child is immune to temptation. Temptation will come to you. And even Jesus was tempted. So how, if the master was tempted, why would his followers not be tempted? Amen. But you have a way that you can say no, and that is being full of the Spirit of God, surrendered to Him, full, fully surrendered to Jesus and everything that you do and say, living in the Word of God, and you will know when the counterfeit comes. Amen. You see, because the devil is very clever at sending you something that looks like God but doesn't taste like God. Something that looks like God initially but ends up looking like hell. Amen. You see, some things look very good and tempting. And this is a word for some of you this morning. That many things look very good on the outside, just like the fruit did. It looked good for the sight. It looked good for eating. And it looked good for wisdom. It looked good from the outside, but it was a fraught on the inside, Tracy. Amen. You see, we get fraught fruit. Sometimes you're so disappointed. Especially when I was small and I lived in Grafrenet. And we had these fruit trees in our massive garden. You have those long uh, double 
plots that run down from Queenstown. I'm sure same thing. Double plots with like you have like peach trees and apple trees and orange trees and lemon trees. You have all kinds of trees in the garden. And you used to have your keti. How many of you know what the keti is? A slingshot. You used to have your keti that used to make out of a, 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 a dwarring out. You used to go cut it out of, the, out, of the, out of the thorn wood because it's a nice strong wood. It won't bend too much. And you cut that fork out. You find a tree with a little fork. You cut it out. And you make, make some marks in the top so you, can, so you can take the inside of a tire. Huh? You take the inside of the tire and you bind it with, the, with, the, with your um, uh, draught. What's, uh, my, my English is now fading me this morning. Uh, yeah, and I'm going back to my, my, my childhood days. Uh, <laughs> wire. There we go. Nobody's helping me this morning. Like, swim, swim, Yanni, swim, swim, swim. But Yanni can't swim. Yanni's busy drowning. Oh, Lord, help us. Give me the language of English, Jesus. And then you get a piece of leather and you cut a hole on both sides and you tie it through there and you take the wire again and you tie it up and there you got your keti. And be careful that you don't, your hand mustn't be in the way when you shoot that thing because, hey, no, yeah. That's when you start learning. You initially you shoot. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are too young because you used to buy the power kitty that's made for you in the shop that you can take out sliding doors and stuff with it. I don't know what all kinds of things. What do you want to kill with that kitty? But anyway, we used to see the birds in the tree. Maceful. How many know what the maceful is? That thing with the, with the cave and the tail. And those things are ugly. You can shoot that thing and it will hang upside down under the branch. It hangs on for dear life. It's like it doesn't want to die. It wants to eat more fruit. You can shoot it a second time and then it like drops. To the ground. Those things are tough, man. I don't know what it eats, but anyway, uh, fruit. Uh. Some of those that live on fruit are saying, You see, you must stop eating the meat. But you see, all of this is to draw a picture for you when you actually go to the fruit tree. And you see the birds are enjoying these lacquer delicious peaches. Mm. My wife likes those yellow ones, those big ones. And you bite into them and you saw bloops for lacquer. You know, that, that's when you, but sometimes you bite into it and you, and you see something wriggling on the other side. <laughs> and you realize you've got free meat with your fruit. <laughs> some people spit out, some just swallow. So, <laughs> I'm some of those that just swallow. So, ugh, what? You know, if it doesn't kill me, it makes me fat, or I don't know what way. But the fruit, sometimes, and this is what happens with us, the, the, the fruit looks good on the outside, the things that the devil sets up, and Pastor Donovan, bless his soul, our, our national leader that had passed on and been with, with the Lord for a while now, but, um, you know, he, he said this, he said that the devil works from the outside in, but God works from the inside out. And this is something you need to write down because the devil works with temptation on the outside. What you can see with your eyes, smell with your nose, hear with your ears, feel with your touch. That's how the devil works. He works from the outside in, but God begins on the inside, in the core of man. God goes right down to the core of your spirit, and he, you're born again from the spirit. John 3 verse 3 says you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. You must be born again from the spirit. That's why when people come and join a church, it can be like a club, or it can be like a, a spiritual home. You do not want it to be a club, because a club is all about the outside, the joy, the fun. The, the worship, what the preacher is like, what he says, all of these things. Yes, the doctrine I'm not talking about. I'm talking about the entertainment value of it. I'm talking about the feel-good of it. If you're only in the church for the feel-good value of it, you are mistakenly not saved yet, and you need to come to salvation in Jesus because there's something deeper that drives me to come to church than just the feel-good and the worship and the coffee and the people and the gathering and the nice facilities and the personalities of the person on the stage. It's not about that stuff. It's actually about worshiping Jesus in spirit and in truth and being born again from the spirit because there is a thing called false conversion. How many of you know this? Where someone just came and said an ABC prayer in the front, but Monday they're back in the same sin. Where they go full throttle back into the world because there was not a born again experience in the church. Hmm. Looks good on the outside, but it's fraught on the inside. 
And we need to begin to discern when the enemy brings a fruit that looks like that one in the garden that's going to set you up for pride and say, wow, if I eat of this, if I take this deal, I can make millions, but that millions can take you down. Well, some people will just go, oh, it's the blessings of God. It might be the curses of the devil. You've got to discern in everything. What is on the inside? You need to look beyond what's on the outside. You need to look beyond on what's on the physical level. You need to open up your spiritual eyes so that you can see. Not the spiritual eye, the spiritual eyes, which the Spirit gives you. Amen? Listen to this, what Paul writes about the battle, and you're going to say, I feel like that some days. Let's go to the next slide. It says in Romans 7, verse 15 to 20, this struggle is real. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate to do, and if I do what I do want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is the sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. I used to... You know, when I started as a Christian, I, started, I read the scripture like 10 times. I said, what did you say? Do, do not do, do not do, do, do what? Do, 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 da, da. <laughs> it's like, listen, this scripture is like confusing. But what he wants to do, he doesn't do. And what he doesn't want to do, he does. You got it? What he wants to do, he doesn't do. But what he doesn't want to do, he keeps on doing. You got it? Go practice that one a couple of times. You're going to get it. Because the fleshly nature is working contrary to the spirit that God has given you. The fleshly nature is still fallen, but God has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Amen. God has redeemed you from sin. God has taken you from that place and he's given you the ability to say no to the fleshly nature and to live in the spiritual nature and to live a holy life just as he's holy. That is the gift that God has given us. The Holy Spirit enables you to live by grace. Grace is not only a, a pardon from sin. Grace is not the pardon from sin. Grace is not just unmerited favor, but it is the ability to live according to what God wants you to live according to. Amen? It's an empowerment from God as well. That's what grace is. He says, now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is the sin living in me that does it. Sure. How many times... Bible says, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow after me. You have to get up in the morning and deny yourself again tomorrow morning. Because your flesh wants something different to what the Spirit of God wants for you. You see, you can follow the flesh. You can even fall into deep sin while you're serving God. And you're wondering what's going wrong in my life. And you're opening that door to the flesh. You're doing what you don't want to do all the time. But God, may God give you the strength and the grace and may God surround you with the right people that you can trust. Because sometimes it's as simple as opening up and confessing. Everything that's kept in the dark, the devil can use. How many of you know this? If there's some secrets that are running around in your life, if there's some things that are eating you up, if there's some things that are drawing you away from the Spirit of God, you need to find a way to bring it before the Lord. All it takes is to be honest before God if you don't want to speak to someone because often it also helps to speak to someone. As James says, confess your sins one to another that you may be healed. James chapter 5, do you know this? Confess your sins one to another. The confession is in the Bible. Amen. And not to a priest or a high priest or someone that can pardon your sin. They can't pardon your sin. Only Jesus can pardon your sin by the blood of Christ. Amen. But you can come to someone that you trust. I speak to my wife. Oh, Lord, may there never be secrets in our house that I keep away from my wife. Because that secret will cause divorce. That will go down the line that the enemy wants it to go down. If you've got some secrets in your life, it's now time. Angus Bucking is so strong in this area because Uncle Angus will say to the men, every time they get together, it's the same message. Husbands, if you've done something wrong towards your wife, go on your knees and say you're sorry. You see, but pride will often keep men away from that. And women. Come on, it's not just the men, but he speaks to men specifically. If you've wronged your children, go on your knees and say you're sorry. Do you know that can turn things around in your house? 
Do you know that will break the stronghold of the enemy that's there because of the secrets that have been kept in the cupboard? The secrets will always come out because the truth will always be revealed. You see, you cannot keep things away. They will always come back. What you sow is what you're going to reap. And we must be sure that we're not sowing bad seeds in the dark because they will come back with a vengeance. What was God's first command? Let's look at that. Exodus 20, verse 2 to 3. It says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Do you see the first command? You shall have no other gods before me. What does this speak to? How many of you know what the word is here? It speaks to what God spoke to in the Old Testament over and over again. And I believe many sins are connected to this sin. To not put God first. Pastor George, you preached it over the years. Put God first in giving. Put God first in worship. Put God first in your family. Put God first in everything you do in your business. Whatever it is, put God first. This says, you shall, not, you shall have no other gods before me. No other gods before me. This speaks to idolatry. I mean, you know, idolatry is still a problem today. You might say, Pastor, I don't have a golden calf in my house that I bow down to. Because I know people go there. Because we know in the Old Testament they were bowing down to physical gods. They had wooden idols. I say, I don't have any, I don't have any Buddhas sitting in my house. Hopefully you don't. <laughs> Pastor George says he looks like the Buddha. <laughs> I didn't say it. For those on camera, don't now say nasty comments and say that disrespectful young pastor. Young, I claim it. But listen to the idolatry that's going on today. Let's go to Ezekiel 18 verse 20. You shall not give any of your offspring to offer them to Molech, nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Abortion is because of idolatry. Do you know that? Because man says it's my body and I'll decide. My body, my choice, you know the movement. Now, my body, my choice is, 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 is against God. Now, I, I know that many people might disagree with me, those that feel strongly about some of these issues, but I do not get confused when it comes to the Word of God. And I'm not condemning someone this morning. If you've gone through an abortion, God forgives. It's not unforgivable sin. If you've gone through divorce, God forgives. It's not unforgivable sins. I don't want to bring a condemnation on people that have experienced that and the trauma of it because it's horrific. And some people even went, were too young to make decisions and people feel bad and I'm not that person that's going to come say to them, well, you see us. It's not about that. It's, it's about understanding where the root of this thing comes from. It comes from the idol worship of my will. It comes from saying that I will decide and God does not have the answer over life anymore. I begin to decide who lives and who doesn't live. Isn't that trying to be God just like in the garden? If you eat of the fruit, you will be like God. Remember Satan in heaven? What was his thing? I want to be like God. You see the sin of pride that comes in man, that puts man on the throne and takes God off the throne and says, I will decide. There's some things in life that man cannot decide and should not decide. And so when we look at this, there's an onslaught. I see it even in a deeper measure that there's an onslaught of the next generation. Millions and millions and millions and millions of babies are being aborted today and tomorrow and the day after. And it's the next generation that's being killed off. And there's a spiritual connotation to this. There is an idol behind this. There is still a molech in the spirit. There is still a worship of this idol. There is still a worship of man. When man worships himself, he ends up in trouble. He ends up in a place far from God. He will never end up with God. If man worships himself, he will only end up with Satan. Because it's Satan's favorite sin, his pride. And when we move away from God, we end up in these places. And when we talk about idols, let's look at what the idols look like today. And I'm going to ask you, as I read them, think about them. Now, some of you might disagree with me. The first one I put there is family. I don't know about you, but people have put family before God. 
Didn't we know, did we not read earlier that God is a jealous God? Did we not read earlier? I mean, I love my children. I will fight for my children. I will kill for my children. Not when they've done something wrong. I'm talking about if there's an attack on my family. I mean, which person that doesn't love his family won't stand up for his family and do something about it? But even my earthly father, my father is a good father. I have no reason to doubt that my father loves me, my earthly father. But my father doesn't have an inch on my heavenly father. He doesn't compare at all to my heavenly father. There are attributes in him that are like my heavenly father, but he cannot compare to the perfect father that's in heaven. Amen. I can never compare and put my father on a pedestal and say that he is as great as God in my life because he cannot replace God. My wife, as much as I love my wife, and the Bible says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church, and laid his life down for her. Amen. In other words, I must sacrifice for my wife, but I will not sacrifice to the point where it affects my worship to God. I need some amens on this. Amen, because some, in some, in the culture we live in today, also the children are now idols in the house. How do I know this? Because your children dictate what you do. <laughs> some of you look very worried. Oh, it's true, because in our houses today, the children are dictating to the parents. That's not the order of God. God didn't make it that way. God, design. God gave the parents the responsibility of the children. Do not let your children rule the household. Yo. How do I know that we have idols for family? <laughs> let me not go down that route. Family. Wealth. The richer I get, the happier I'll be. Do you know that statement? If I only had a million in the bank, I'd be happy. If I only had two million. Do you know that that's a never-ending game that the devil begins to play with you? The proof is in those that are earning millions that are still stealing millions. <laughs> How is it possible that someone can be earning 500,000 rand a month and still need to steal 5 million a month? Because greed has no end to it. And don't tell me that it can't come to you because you still have that battle between the flesh and the spirit when you don't have enough, when you are comparing with the Joneses. If only I can drive a better car, people will respect me more. <laughs> no, you need to begin to respect yourself by knowing your relationship with God. Amen. It begins there. It begins on the inside. Don't, don't let the enemy work from the outside with these idols. Image. I don't know if the tongue is in these days or the tongue is out. But all I know is like the trends change all the time. It's now cool. It was cool to pout. <laughs> Do you know what you look like whenever other people walk past? It's like you're going to kiss the screen. I don't know. what. You... <laughs> Lord. Do you know that this generation... As is in Afrikaans, is behept met hulle self. Is there any better way to say it? I don't think so. If you can bring me a better way, please do. We are infatuated with our own image. We need to look like that rock star. Well, rock stars are out now, devil's are years. No, pop stars. Idols. They call it idols. The show is called Idols. For goodness sake, Idols. <laughs> I mean, do you know that why people fail, and I've said this over and over again, why people fail is because the frame of man was never designed to be worshipped. Man's frame, man's makeup cannot carry the worship that come to them. That's why celebrities fall and idols fall and music stars fall because their character is not developed, but their talent is carrying them. And your character needs to carry you, not your talent. And God is interested in character. You can dress beautiful on the outside. No, nothing against it. Please keep on dressing beautifully. Please keep on doing the selfies. But where is your heart? Where is your worship? Is, what is the purpose of that? Is it so that you're waiting for that first like? Yes. Second like. Yes. 3,000 likes. I'm loved. Thank you, Lord. 
Do you see the false thing that the enemy is bringing in? You're spending your time in a, in a world that doesn't exist. Because reality hits again when you go to your room and you're alone and you don't feel what God has done on the inside because it matters what God thinks about you more than what other people think about you. Can you return to the image that God wants for you and that is to be holy and to be a worshiper of God and to be a person of prayer and a person of the word and, and that is what God values in you. God values that you're a child of His and that's enough that you don't have to put an image out there. Now, I understand that there's marketing and all kinds of things involved these days. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the unnatural thing for you to wait for the likes to come in. Come on, it's a thing these days, and we must move away from that. Career can be an idol. How many of you know this? I see it over and over again where families suffer because mom and dad are chasing after a career. But I'm doing it for my children, but you haven't spent any time with your children. This happens over and over again. Where people say, I even heard fathers that say, but I gave my children an education. But what about the relationship? Do you know that your child would rather have a relationship than an education? He might excel more in his education if he had a relationship. You cannot get those years back, but you can do something about it now and phone them today and say, let's start over. Sure. I feel that's definitely for us. We need to start over some areas. We need to build that relationship back with our parents or our parents with us. I phone my parents regularly and check how they're doing. My brother and I speak regularly. Why? Because we value family, but not above God. We speak about God. We speak about what God's doing in our families, and we honor God together. Amen? But can't your relationship be restored? It can. Time can be taken back in a sense when you start over today. Don't let the enemy lie to you and say it's too late. It's never too late. I would fight for this. I want to say to some to you this morning, and this is just me taking the gloves off now and just being a pastor on the ground and saying to you this morning, I would fight for this area probably more than anything else in my life is to try and restore things in my family. Now, I'm not saying that it works in every family. I'm not saying that it's going to be easy. I'm not saying that it's even possible in some areas. And let me tell you, you need to fight to have those relationships in your family. If you have it in your power to do it, do it. If you have an ability to say, Pastor George, you said it at the last funeral. Don't speak nice about me at my funeral. Speak nice about me now. You're a great man of God, Pastor. <laughs> and I love you. And I've said it to you before. I'm not going to wait until Pastor George is in the grave or Pastor Gail is in the grave to tell them how much they've imparted into our lives. Pastor Gail, you're a great mother. Loving. Proverbs 31. Amen. You see, we need to do these things while we're alive. You're thinking of your own children now. You're thinking of what you should be saying to them and what you are saying to them. We can be caught up so in life that we forget the things that are important. The enemy is very good at this, that he distracts you and say, but this is more important. We're going to lose the house if I don't spend time there. Or you're going to lose your children and your family if you don't spend time there. Which one do you choose? Come on, there's some things the enemy is just trying to, to hide away from you. And some of us are so hard in this area that we, we hear what's being said this morning, but we, we're still not feeling it. May the Holy Spirit just come and release you again this morning and give you Give you clarity again on what's important. That's why I say at the bottom, pray and ask God to show you. Not just the idols that you have, because I don't think you need to pray about those. I think you know about those. I think you need to pray about ways forward. I think you need to pray for wisdom. I think you need to pray for strategy. I think you need to pray for God to give you insight. Now, I said media already. I said self, and that's on top. We spoke about that over and over again. If self is on top of everything, if it's all about you, then you're in the new age. Not in Christianity. Do you know this? You know the greatest thing with the New Age belief is that it's all about self. It's all about navel gazing. The deeper I look within myself, the more I'm going to find myself. Don't make statements like that because that's not godly. The more you find who God is and the more God reveals himself to you, the more you understand who you are and what you are designed to do and what you were put on this earth for. And your purpose is found in God and God alone. 
Your purpose outside of God is the plan of the enemy. Your purpose inside of God is the plan of God. Amen. Are we with me? Let's listen to two quotes on idolatry. You don't have to go to heathen lands today to find false gods. And this was America, Dwight Moody, D.L. Moody. America is full of them. Whatever you love more than God is your idol. We know D.L. Moody wrote many great things. And he said this about America, and we can say it about every country. Whatever a country, whatever a people in that country, whatever a church puts above God is their idol. If the name of our church is above the name of Jesus, come on, let me put it a little bit closer. If the Open Door West Point brand, because it's a brand, if the brand of the Open Door West Point is above the name of Jesus, we are idolizing our own empire. Do you know that one of the greatest obstacles in the world is the spirit of empire? You need to write this down somewhere. The spirit of empire, the spirit of building my own empire, that will bring the church down because God is exposing and removing and taking out the dross and saying, I want my church back and the glory that belongs to me. And God will remove any man or woman, doesn't matter how big your name is, upon the earth if it is not recognized in heaven. Amen. As long as you want anything very much, especially more than you want God, it is an idol. A.B. Simpson. If you're chasing after something more than you're chasing after God, it is your idol. And as simple as that, I'm like, this stuff hits me. I, I don't know about you. Doesn't this hit you? Ah, ah. None of us are perfect here. We have idols. Let me tell you, we have idols. And we slip into those modes so quickly because we're used to it. We're used to our little idol. You know, we cuddle it at night. We keep it in our head, you know. There's that space in your head where you shine that idol till it shines, you know. You have that little golden idol. Brasso. Polish that thing. Your idol. You keep thinking about your idol. The thing that occupies your mind the most this morning is your idol. Jay Kirsten. You put that quote in there as well. The thing that occupies your thoughts the most is your idol. Think about it. Write it down somewhere. Now, there's good news. How many of you love to hear the good news now? You say, whoa, this is heavy this morning. Oh, the idol stuff. Oh, get away, please, Pastor. Can we talk about something else now? I feel convicted about this stuff, and we should. But do you know that you have the ability now to worship in a new nature? Not from the flesh. When we worship, we don't worship from the flesh here in the house. We begin from the Spirit. Listen to what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 to 18. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has come on. The new has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, a relationship with the Father. This is the good news, that that you're not worshiping from that place anymore of your old life, your old idols. And if those idols are trying to come back, just kick them back. Just take them under the blood. Just come to the obedience of Christ. Just be obedient to the Word of God. Begin to sacrifice those things. What did God do in the Old Testament when they took over a nation? God also commanded them to break down all the idols on the high places where the people used to worship. They had to shatter those idols poles that they bow down to, to those false gods that they bow They had to melt down that gold of those calves that the people used to bow down. The Israelites came out of Egypt full of idol worship. It was evident when they were in the desert when Moses went up on the mountain. When he came back down, he found Aaron in them. Worshipping before a golden calf. <laughs> are we going back to our idol worship because we are fearful that God's going to destroy us? Wow. You see, times of turmoil often turns you back to your idols. Sometimes when you're under stress, sometimes when you're going through tough times, you begin to doubt God. I believe at the bottom of us, do you trust God? Do you trust God and you're keeping that relationship in place with God? Because if you do, the idols will stay back. But when you begin to doubt God and you begin to look for other things to build your life on, idols will rise up and you'll begin to worship those idols and the Bible, and it's, you know, it's the truth that says to us that, that that which you worship, you become. Do you know that? Look at people that worship all kinds of false gods. That's what possesses them. You know, in the spirit, you know, 
in many religions, there are false idols. There are calves that people buy down to. There are elephants. There are monkeys. There are, there are ancestors. There are all kinds of things. And those things have manifested even in those animals when those people get delivered. Because spiritually, it's a real thing. You think that Buddha sitting here, don't go to Mr. Price's home and buy a lovely thing that sits like this. With a touring kop. What a lovely ornament. Put it there in my rose garden. Well, what are you inviting to your house? What a beautiful little fat guy. Just rub his head. Shh, rub his tummy. What a beautiful cat. You know, those people believe that that thing's bringing in good luck. Bad luck. Bad spirits. Let me just put this thing around my child's waist to protect him, a safety belt. Come on. Let me just do some ritual when the child is born, blow some smoke over the child. Let me just uh, say certain incantations and things when I'm sick and then my headaches will go away. Some people learn these formulas and things from their parents. Statements you do. But God has given us His Spirit. We have a new nature in Christ now. We have the ability to worship in the Spirit and in truth. We are free. We can walk in the freedom that God has brought for us. Let us not bow down to something else but Jesus Christ in the church. Because the church, the church is still His church. He is still the cornerstone of this church. He's still the cornerstone of the church worldwide. His name is Jesus. He's still the foundation that Paul said, don't build on any other foundation, but build on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Don't build on Paul. Don't build, build on Apollos. Don't build on George, Galia, Julius. Don't build on Liesel. Don't build on anything else but Jesus. Amen. Then that is where you'll go right, and that's where your foundation will be strong. Go and test. Go and ask yourself this afternoon. Go and sit and talk to your family a bit about some of the stuff you need to get rid of, some of the stuff, that some of the habits in your family, some of the patterns in your family, some of the patterns in your thinking, and bring it to God and surrender all to Jesus. And let us worship Him in the new nature to reconcile back to the Father that that relationship will be rekindled and the church will be as strong as ever and we'll see the things that we need to see happening in the church. We will see the miracles break forth. We will see the things happen of the power. We said this morning, there is power in the name of Jesus. Come on. How many of you know this? And we said there's power in the blood. Do you believe this? But for some reason, we put all of these other blocks all of these other things that are false gods before God. And God says, I want the worship back. I want the honor back. And I want the glory back. Let us stand together as we pray. I'm going to ask you this morning to, wherever you are, I know many of us can't go on our knees we might, not never get, we might not ever get up again, but it's a reality. But at the end of the day, when there's a sign this morning that you're surrendering all to God again, your family, your personal life, your personal thoughts, everything, won't you surrender everything to Jesus again your whole life by just lifting your arms to Him? Just when you, as a sign, just by lifting your hands up to heaven and saying, Lord, it's not about me, it's not about self. Let your kingdom come in my life as it is in heaven. Won't you pray that with me? Lord, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in my life as it is in heaven. I surrender all to you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I surrender my family to you. I surrender my children to you. I surrender my spouse to you. I surrender my business to you. I surrender my income to you. I surrender my whole life to you, Jesus. Here I am, Lord. Here I am before you. Take me as I am. Holy Spirit, come and fill me again. Come and refresh me. And come and restore me to that relationship with the Father. In the name of Jesus. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a good Sunday. Amen.
you need prayer afterwards or something we need to pray for you urgently, please, we'd love to pray with you. Don't run off. Whatever it is, whatever the need, God bless you. Enjoy the fellowship. We will see you. Remember one service every Sunday, 9 o'clock. See you next Sunday. See you in the week.